Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations and today I'm going to show you how we can make an outdoor planter with some garden edging. Let me show you how I did it. Alright, as you have seen, we are going to build an outdoor planter today and it is currently raining outside. Of course, I could have edited this to make it look like I started outside and then came indoors, but I like to be honest with you. So the one great advantage is I have already sketched this up in SketchUp, so I know exactly what all of my pieces need to be cut to so I can get everything dimensioned first and then hopefully when it clears up this afternoon, we can head out into the sun and get this thing into place. So I've picked up my form board. The first thing I need to do is cut this to width and to length. So I say let's crank the tunes and let's get building. The heart of this planner is the form board. It is rated to be waterproof and perfect for the outdoors. I started by using the circular saw to cut the board down to more manageable pieces before I headed to the table saw. In total, I needed four pieces that were 330mm in height and 845mm in width. While cutting these pieces to size on the table saw, let me run over the design. When I was designing the planter, I had one major constraint. I didn't want to have to cut the pavers that made up the edge, so I used the pavers as my guide when deciding on the size of the planter. I also wanted the pickets to have a design on top that gave the planter some more visual appeal but also deterred my two lovely dogs from jumping into the planter, so I went with an angled design on top with a flat part so they wouldn't hurt themselves but it still looked good. I sealed all the plywood edges with paint to add a little protection and it was time to move on. Our form board is all cut and drying over the other side of the workshop so now we can move on to the pickets. I don't know if that's what you call them but it's what I'm going to call them for today anyway. I need 36 in total at a length of 400mm so I'm going to set up a stop block on my mutter saw, I'm going to crank the tunes and I'm going to settle in and I'm going to get cutting. If you're ever doing a project like this and you have to make a number of cuts over and over, do yourself a favour and spend the time to set up a jig or a stop block. It will make the whole process go a whole lot quicker. The decking boards that I am using is Merbau decking. The boards are affordable and they have a grooved back which allows water to drain away and not sit on the timber. To get all the pickets, I needed six boards at 2.4 metres in length each. Once I had all my pickets cut, I could move on to the top detail. A little tip for you, if you have boards that are not easily divided, put your ruler in one corner and move the ruler until you hit a measurement that is easily divided. For example, I moved my ruler to 200mm and then marked it 100mm. Once I had the centre point marked, I made a mark 10mm each side of the centre to make the flat section. I would then cut 30 degree angles on each side. I set my miter saw to 30 degrees and once again set a stop block so that I could make the same cut over and over. Not only does this save time with cutting, but it also saves me from measuring and marking every picket. I made my way through 36 pickets and then moved on to mark up the boards for the screw holes. Just like before, I took a little extra time and made two jigs that will allow me to mark all my screws in the same spot on every board. I marked up each board and then used a forcenip bit in my drill press to make the countersink holes. I set a depth spot on my drill press so that I was only drilling down a couple of mil to have the screw heads just below the surface. I then used a hand drill and a 3 mil drill bit to finish the pre-drilling. I made sure to put a backer board under my board so that when I was drilling I wouldn't get tear out on the back. You always want to be pre-drilling but definitely be pre-drilling when you're using hardwood otherwise you'll find yourself splitting wood and breaking screw heads which is not what you want. To make things easier I sanded and finished all the boards before construction. I sealed all the boards with decking oil which is hard wearing and will help the timber last longer while outside. With the pickets drying, I could start to construct my box. I made sure that the factory sealed edges of the form board were all facing down as I wanted them on the bottom. 
I used square clamps to get my boards square and once again pre-drilled and screwed the boards into place. I'm using 40mm decking screws so they won't rust or fail on me outside. When it came to screwing the decking boards to the form board, I used a 20mm spacer on the bottom. I wanted to raise the decking board up so that it wouldn't be sitting in the dirt while outside and the paver would cover the bottom. I clamped the first board into place and finished the pre-drilled and screwed it in. When designing this in SketchUp, I had a 10mm gap in between each board, but at this stage I double checked in the field and realised that I needed actually a 9mm gap in between each board. I cut a 9mm spacer from a scrap piece of timber to help me get the boards aligned correctly. I simply used the spacer and made my way along each side. I would make sure that I put each edge on before any of the others to make sure that if I was out by a mill or two it was not noticeable on the inside as it would be if it was on the outside if it didn't come all the way to the edge. To hide if my spacing was out by a mill or two I would put the edge pickets on before the inside ones so that it wouldn't be noticeable like it would be if the last picket didn't go all the way to the edge. I made my way all the way around the planter screwing in 36 pickets with 144 screws. If you have a drill and an impact driver, this is where they're going to earn their money. It made the whole process so much quicker not having to keep switching heads over in my drill. With the planter constructed, it was time to move outside. I removed the bricks that were the old guiding edging, which you can see clearly didn't work, and started to remove the grass and the old tree. Now I hear you asking why are you removing what looks to be a perfectly good tree and planting it with something that looks the same. Well, the two lovely pups you see running around being my supervisors, aka Clipper and Griffin, chewed the bottom of the tree when they were little and as a result the tree has died. We are coming into spring in Australia so I thought before it got ridiculously hot again I would build this planter and put in a new tree so we would have a nice spring display. Once I had everything cleared out, I got to work on getting the bricks in the right spot and level. I could then place the planter on top of the bricks and get to work on the garden edging. The pavers I am using are 200mm by 150mm by 50mm deep. You could just use paving sand here and sit the pavers on top, but I wanted to concrete them in to stop weeds from growing around them and to stop them from moving for longer. You want the pavers to be sunken into the ground about half their thickness. I mixed up the concrete and got to work. I have never done anything like this before, so this was a big learning curve for me. I took my time to level the first brick because I knew I'd be leveling everything off that first brick. I also started at the front of the planter as this would be the side that would get seen the most and if I was going to make a mistake or have a little bit of a gap I wanted the mistake to be at the back. Turns out everything lined up perfectly but I just wanted to be safe. I would lay down concrete and then put the brick into place. Using a level and a hammer I would knock the brick into place and into level with the previous brick and made my way around the planter. Once I had all the bricks into place, I used the leftover concrete to seal the front of the pavers all the way around. Now for the fun part, planting the plant. Now I can hear you saying, what kind of plant is that and it doesn't look that great. You would be right for now. The plant is a weeping cherry and although it looks like this through the winter, it flowers in the summer and then has green leaves all the way through to autumn when it drops them and then looks like this again for a couple of months. With the weeping cherry planted, we could call this project done. I hope you have liked this project and if you have, be sure to hit those subscribe and like buttons and let me know what you think about the project in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.